Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian Kramhertz, Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Thursday, August. Uh, sorry, Wednesday, August 24th. I'm already, I'm jumping ahead to Thursday already. Uh, well, we had a nice day for the averages. They squeaked out some gains. The small caps definitely led. Uh, small caps were up about three quarters of a percent. The Q's S&P were up uh, just around 30 basis points for the day. Before I get much further in the video, risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Everything that we're going through is for education purposes only. So yes, small caps turned the corner today. Uh, they had a nice rally up almost 1% for the day and the micro caps were up even more than that. Um, I will say also, you know, a couple of negative things and two is that um, no let up in terms of yields. So kind of interesting what's going on there. And um, we could start with that chart. We'll, we'll get the bond analysis out of the out of the way uh very quickly but yeah i mean i you know this is interesting to see bonds just continue to move down here um interesting because we're not really oversold yet and, you know we've had this move you know from all the way in here since we had this reversal bar we had a pretty big uh bearish engulfing bar um that was back in the beginning of the month and since then yields have just been um going higher and higher and higher course we're looking at bond prices here so keep in mind yields are inverted with this now we do have you know we we didn't hold the you know none of these things actually held in terms of support right uh you know we broke into the value area um we got we broke right through the 50-day moving average no problem we got to the bottom of value no problem there in terms of breaking support um the last thing i see on you know on my charts is um this version point of control that's taken out again version point of control is where high volume has occurred previously that we have not revisited so a lot of times we can see after a decent move a um a takeout of you know or, or a return to that level and um and then a possible reversion from there so um you know that is taken out um we'll see i i think you know and, and by the way look at the volume today too so you know perhaps this is this could be a turning point we may get that on friday right it might end up being a nice little trade um one of the things that we highlighted earlier in the day that there was a pretty decent size um uh put sale and uh call spread long call spread in the tlt etf right so tlt is a little bit different maturity um duration than this 30-year bond futures but interesting so somebody was positioning on the long side uh of for um for bonds so again you know could be could be you get a reversal uh you know friday i would think and that might be a trade that i might actually entertain for some type of you know small short-term option trade considering the move that's happening there right and then the other one is is of course um bonds uh not bonds uh sorry the us dollar which we don't know yet if this is forming a double top or if this is going to break through and make new highs too early to tell you know the trend is up even though there's this big volume that happened yesterday you know maybe some some selling into the strength yesterday in the us dollar but this was flat to for today we need more information and again just around the corner is you know which i know everyone is focusing on but it may be you know i i, I generally think some of these things like the um like friday's uh um uh, powell speech you know i are over anticipated because i don't really think that they're gonna you know somebody asked me about my view about what i think for friday um i i don't think powell says anything new i i don't think he really can so i you know i know that there's you know people de-risk ahead of these and and they get really cautious i get that and i understand that but i think it's being you know overly played out but we'll see that's my opinion i i could be wrong um i'm i'm wrong a lot um so but i i just think that it's really over over anticipated i'm more interested with the pce deflator report that comes out on friday morning but that's another story all right so let's Let's get to uh let's get to the price action in the indices um yes uh we did get a little bit of a bounce today of 46 basis points but the main thing here is we're still below these two short-term moving averages right so we need to see uh we need to see a little bit more but you know maybe today was a little bit of a start right i, I talk about it in a lot of these videos about going to the one hour chart to look for some clues one thing that i think is interesting that i talked about yesterday is that we did not get above any of the short-term move, moving averages. Just yesterday was not the day for that. Um, every time that the price tried to turn the corner, 
uh, it was getting rejected, right? Today, finally, like this 50-day moving average, right? So I've got the five on here, which is the one that's very close to the price, the 20 and the 50, right? You know, perhaps, you know, the 50-day moving average just needed to kind of catch up with the price action to the downside. See, see how much easier it is a hurdle for this to get over now that the price comes all the way down into that. So again, patience kind of pays off a little bit. Now, what I would watch for tomorrow, you know, because again, we, we've got to go through one more day before we get this damn speech over with <laughs> that everybody that everybody is, has so much attention on. So, you know, perhaps you could see a little bit of a reversion back, right? I thought today there might have might have been some of that short covering um, today because you looked and, and you know one of the one of the names that was up decently or one of the areas that was up was the ARC funds right and my opinion with the ARC stuff is you know it's one of the most shorted groups out there so when you see this kind of lead uh, it you know it could be just for the fact that you know, the shorts and the longs really don't want a lot of exposure into Friday. And you might see a little bit of, hey, we're going to cover some of our shorts a little bit, take some profits, score up our books and kind of go from there. Now, again, I could be wrong with that, but looking at what's going on with yields today, I would think if there wasn't um, some type of event, I, I would think that the, that the indices may have um, continued to go lower today. Um, given the the situation with um, with yields, but who knows? M maybe there's something else that I'm not seeing, right? Sometimes we're we're, we're just we don't have all, every single piece of the puzzle, right? We try to basically uh, make do with what we have. All right, so a couple other things that I thought were um, interesting um, was the move that is happening. You know, you know, energy had some follow through to it today, so XLE outperformed again, up you know, quiet but quietly did that up 1.2%, you know, no major three or 4% move. But if you look at the performance, you know, that did particularly, particularly well. The clean energy stocks had a really nice day today too. And again, this is another one. Now I don't, I don't follow like the pot stock saga, but again, like this is another high short interest group. Um, so I don't know if there was any specific news on this, but whenever there's there is, there is or there are news on the pot stocks about you know possibly you know some some type of um, something making pot legal in a state, it's very short lived, right? So I, I don't know if that's a story, but I but. Um, you know, if there was some type of news in this group, but again, when, when I see this group up 7%, to me, it usually means short covering, okay, um, and usually not much else, but hey, you do have a break of this value area, and it has been going sideways for a while, so on good volume too, so it'll be something to watch, right, it's been a base for, for a while now, so it's actually, um, this is the first day outside of the August value area, so Believe it or not, like that was your best uh, performing group for the day. Um, like I said, clean energy was very strong. The solar names, I've been long some ENPH, right, which I was able to uh, finally kind of work that into be a profitable trade. Um, I'm still in that trade, but I did take a profit target um, right at this five minute uh, ver uh, version point of control. So I, I took my target right there. All right. And because um, I did add to that trade yesterday, reduced my cost basis a little bit. I still like this. It just made me, so it may just need some more time. Right. And we'll see. Um, I think the level to, to watch is basically the highs of the day, 296 for some con continuation. Nevertheless, I took a good portion of the trade off today. Uh, but that, that was your best performing group. Um, and if we want to look at the whole group, it kind of looks like the same. I, I, I always go, to, you know, if I'm looking at, at a, group, I always go to where the, the strongest name is, right? I know that's very counterintuitive if you are a newer trader, right? Newer traders um, tend to go to the to the underperformers. Sometimes they think, oh, geez, this name is down so much. It's a good buy, right? If you've read, you know, if you know a little bit about trend trading and you know a little bit about relative strength, what actually happens in the markets is the names that are strong continue to go higher. Right. The names that are underperformers usually stay underperformers. Right. Um, every once in a while, you will um, see a reversion to the mean, but I'm more playing the names that are strong and um, just continue to make new highs. Come in when they come in to support, they're usually pretty good buying opportunities. Right. So coming in, usually a check back, like we saw a couple of days ago into the 20 day moving average and from there, right? Another name that I um, put on yesterday was CLH. Speaking of, you know, just that, 
right? So this is Clean Harbor. Look at this name today, up 4%, right? So again, um, real nice, you know, earnings gap, ran a little bit, consolidated, and nice move higher, right? So we're seeing that all over the place. When the market does have some strength to it, this is what has been tending to happen right, <clears throat> is these names that have been consolidating, right? We talked about this probably, you know, towards the end of last week that many of the names that had good earnings, they got a little bit ahead of themselves, right? They needed to put in that consolidation. Um, another name that I'm watching in this group, right, is CEG. Now, this is not, this is not turned. It's also up considerably, right? But the market really seems to like these companies right now. Um, this is, again, I've talked about this company many times, but this is Constellation Energy. It's carbon-free energy and sustainable solutions. The company generates nuclear, hydro, wind, solar energy. And that was also, I don't have, a, I don't have that in my spreadsheet, but um, C CCJ had a huge day today. Chart did not look great, by the way. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. This I would call a pretty tricky setup. It actually looked like it was breaking down. Right, but you know we're hearing about how expensive utility bills are. We're hearing about um, Japan had a story out about um, you know reopening a couple of their or some of their reactors. I believe there was a story out about that. Um, that kind of got this group to get going. So anything that kind of has you know a little bit of nuclear you know in its um, you know in its business is is going to kind of move on that particular. Uh, news. So alternative energy, big moves, which kind of brings us over to the next group, right? The lithium names, very, very strong as well. As well, ALB almost at new highs, right? It's coming in and testing that 290, right? LTHM, which was a big setup in our trading room. Um, I did not take this trade, but very, very, uh, you know, very nice to the, you know, so speaking of, of, an, of a similar setup, right? Really nice move. Check back to the 20 day moving average, right? That was at 27 stocks up to 32. Right? Another name that's that um, had like a bad earnings reaction, but is a nice play right now, kind of checks a couple different boxes because the agriculture names continue to be very strong. And this one's also lithium too. Right, so you've got you've got a couple things going on in this name. Speaking of that name, that group which we talked about in yesterday's video, some continuation. Um, IPI very nice, closed on the highs of the day. I think it's very close to taking out this virgin point of control up here. Oh, look at that, very, so close, right? Fifty four thirty three, but um, up seven percent. Um, very nice in that name. Um, for me, I did a couple of trades. I put this trade out earlier, um, set up in Caterpillar. Sometimes they get off. Sometimes they they you know they get off to a really good start. Sometimes they don't. Um, I took this trade off. Right, I got fooled by this um, this hourly bar. That's fine. Right. Um, so it's very difficult to judge in the beginning of the day what's going to be a hit, what's not going to be a hit. Um, so I took that one off. Right. We've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, moves kind of, you know, Caterpillar is obviously more machinery, but I thought it might kind of translate over into, um, you know, the deer moving and some of the other ags moving into maybe Caterpillar going up. Didn't work. That's fine. Again, I go over the winners and the losers. Right. I don't just have winners. I wish I did, but how you manage the losers, right, is could, as I've talked about many, many times in these videos, is how, how you manage the losers this year. Because again, everybody has losers. You could try to pretend you don't, but you do. Um, is, is how you manage the, the losers is how, uh, you know, how it's going to make or break your year, right? Especially this year in particular. Um, again, a couple of years ago, it was different, right? If you made a mistake or if you made a bad trade, the market would bail you out, right? The, the Fed was increasing the size of the balance sheet, right? They were, um, you know, they, they were in expansionary mode, right? So the market would bail you out of bad trades. This year, the market is not bailing you out of your bad trades. You got to, you have to manage that, right? And that's more typical, you know, what we're facing this year is more typical than what we faced, you know, on, on in, in historic uh, trading versus what we faced, you know, a couple of years ago. Sarepta, you know, and and by the way, like this, this was a similar pattern in a few stocks. Um, a, a TTG member brought this to my attention Monday morning and I was like, wow, that's a really nice setup. Um, what really helps is when, and um, I've talked about this pattern quite a bit, but look at how tight the valuary was for this week. What does that indicate? Right, we went over this yesterday, right? But this 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 indicates um, what you what 
what people like to refer to as also coiling. When three of the moving averages are wrapped around one another, it's very similar to a very thin value area. You can get an explosive move um, once this decides to, to change direction. So um, what did I do with this trade today? I actually took it off. Why did I take this trade off, right? Well, because I'm sticking to my game plan for this week. Very, very important, right? Before you, you know, even start to trade, right? Before the market opens, right? Before you click the mouse, you should have a game plan already set up in your mind about what you're going to do for the day, right? Are you adding risk? Are you taking off risk? What is the market telling you? What signals are you getting, right? So my, um, my game plan for the day is looking at the at the overall indices still below the moving the short term moving averages the 20 and the 5 as well as looking what breath has been doing right and if you look at which i'm not going to show here cuz i i review it several times for members during the day but if you look at the nice the nasi right those have been declining right and if you have a 10 day moving average on those charts you know that there's a bearish crossover right now so you adjust right you make adjustments to the market as it changes so for me i wanted to be a net seller right i also tried a little bit of this ptct today because that was that looked very similar to it but again i, I think you know holding bio and i think this might work out fine it's just a question of how much risk that I wanted to hold, right? And right now I'm more in taking some trades off than I am in, in adding risk. Now I did add one or two trades today. What did I add today? I added, I did add the CEG to give this a, a shot. And I also added Alcoa, right? Because it's a little bit, you know, um, these names are a little bit more uh, lower volatility, like they're not going to move as fast as some of these smaller cap biotech names. So if you get that whipsaw move, you might get shaken out this week with biotech, right? With something like Alcoa, not to say that it, I can't lose money in Alcoa, I definitely can, but I've got a breakout in the on the daily chart, right? Some back and forth price action. I'm looking for this to resolve higher, right? And then also um, a breakout of the value area on the one hour chart. And ultimately I'm looking for 56 and maybe 59, but that's a, that's a decent amount up there. But um, again, as I talked about in yesterday's video, this is more of, you know, point A to point B trading right now until things change with the overall direction of the indices. TMDX, I took the majority of that position off. Uh, this is still, you know, this has been one of the strongest names in biotech. Even when biotech has sold off, right, this name has just kind of go, gone sideways a bit, right? Again, another gauge or another, you know, um, good point about relative strength, right? When, when biotech does this, the overall group, this is the XBI ETF, when biotech does this, right, and you find a name in biotech that, you know, it doesn't have to go up. It could just go sideways while the whole group is going down. That is relative strength. And when once it kind of gets going a little bit, it is going to fire like it did um, here. And it did the same thing in here too, right? When um, previously, when biotech was weak, even before that, right? It, it held up very well. So very, very strong name in this group. That said, I've been holding this one for a while. Um, I took the majority of the position off. Right. Also, you know, even like something like this, again, this could kind of really kind of help to find your day. Sometimes this, you know, this is tricky, right? This market is not simple right now, right? AEHR, -A right? Talked about, I took a target in the beginning of the day, really monitored this thing in here. Once it broke into value, I decided, you know, to take this thing off. Where did, where did I exit this thing? Yeah, I said, I'll, I'll keep an eye on this thing because it's a fast mover, right? It could move up, down pretty quickly. So I got out of the 1743, you know, after taking targets higher, one target 19. I think I took a target at around 1850 or 1830 the other day, right? But once it goes back to my cost basis, right? Look at what this thing did today, right? So this could have caused me some damage today. And I said, hey, I'll get back. If it starts to break back above 1830, which is where uh, we'll, and I did put, I forget, um, I did mention it in the room that I would get back involved in it. All right, so that's a couple things. Um, what else do I have written down? Uh, a couple of names that saw option activity. So I covered the lithium names, but names that saw option activity, I thought this was an interesting trade. Um, Crocs, 
right? Pretty decent, uh, over a million dollars of option premium uh, that um, it's the January 95 calls, right? Opening trade, uh, January 95 calls for 580, Right. So kind of interesting. So sometimes, you know, the option activity, I, I don't, um, you know, the way I use option activity is a little bit different than some others do. Um, I basically look to look for idea generation because let's face it, um, a lot of the, <laughs> there's some option trades that really work, right? In particular, I think when you see repeat activity, right, it can kind of help you in terms of, you know, where seeing where institutions are speculating a little bit, but there's a lot of trades that don't work either, right? And I know Twitter is full of only positive confirmations, right? That, you know, if you take every if you take every option trade that you see on the tape, no matter how aggressive it is, no matter if it's swept, you'll go broke, right? <laughs> if you take every option trade, no matter if you just stick to if you just stick to the most aggressive ones, you will go broke by taking every option trade. Right. It's just it's just is what it is. Right. But if you if you listen to Twitter, they will only tweet out the winners when when there's an aggressive big positioning in an option trade. Right. And it doesn't work. Right. It's like whistling through a graveyard. Right? Is that the right expression? Um, maybe not. That's not the right expression. But you just you won't hear about it again. They won't mention the ones that don't work. Right. They they will only mention the ones that do work. But I'm here to tell you that if you try to take every option trade that's out there, aggressive or not, building a big you know even if it builds big um, open interest, you 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 will lose money on average. Right. Um, but if you can provide, if you can kind of put it into your own system, you may be able to find some edge with it, with it and say, hey, uh, you know, this is now moving above these short-term moving averages. And you could say, hey, I'll go long Crocs maybe versus the 20-day moving average. And if it doesn't trade, uh, sorry, if it doesn't work, you know where to stop yourself out at. The problem is what happens with option flow sometimes is people say, oh, I'm not going to get out of the trade because they must know something. So I'm going to stick in the trade. No, you still have to be a, dis in my opinion, you still have to be a very disciplined trader and you've got to take the trade off. You have to have a stop on the trade and take it off when it doesn't work. Right. If you if you resist that temptation, if you think, oh, I'm going to stay in it because they must know something. Right. You're going to have some big losses on your hands. So anyway, I thought that sorry, long winded answer. But I thought that this was um, an interesting name for the day. Um, another name that I think will be interesting to kind of watch. Right. Is uh, WWE coming into support again. Tribeca Trade Group member brought this to my attention towards the end of the day. Um, I like this. What, why do I like this? It's very methodical, right? Move up, check back into like 20 day moving average, rallies, rallies, checks back, actually went a little bit too far here, but rallied, bailed itself out, back into the 20 day moving average, rallied. So again, it's kind of back into that 20 or 50 day moving average, right? So it might stop here and turn, or it might come into this 50 day moving average and make its turn there, I would think, right? More probability uh, that it does that. Um, you know, turns here or turns there than actually breaking down. But we'll see. You know, that's why, again, you have to have a stop. All right, guys, um, that is it, I think, for today's video. Some interesting earnings reports after the close, right? Maybe this gets, and I think, you know, some of these names are trading up after hours. But Snowflake, I, I think this just took out the, the uh, version point of control, right? But again, some of these names that have been reporting this week, there's been some good earnings reports this week. Palo Alto was a, was uh, a very nice uh, move this um, this week. Also, into it, um, which worked very well for for a couple option trades that we suggested. Right, so uh, um, into it. Uh, was able to take a ten dollar call spread off for, I think eight fifty. Put that on for three seventy yesterday. So very nice work on that one. Uh, so Snowflake, right? Even though I see Salesforce is down, um, you know sometimes these positive results are um, a little bit better than some of the names that are going down. But if you look at like a Datadog after hours, that name is up, right? An MDB, which actually doesn't look too bad in here. Um, might get this high, higher growth group to get going a little bit. I like the possible turn here in MDB. So that's a name that I'm watching for tomorrow. Again, probably if I decide to play something like this, it will probably just be a day trade for now. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.